In this video, I am going to show you how to set up SQL Server 2008 failover clustering on Windows Server 2008. First, let me show you the standalone setup. In the standalone setup, you have the database server. Okay, this is database server. And let's call the machine name, the computer name as M1. Okay, and you store the database files in a separate disk. And let us say this is your application server. Okay, your application server connects to the database server to get the data. And here are your clients. All these clients connect to the application server. And this application server connects to the database server to get the data. Now, if this server goes down, okay, your application server cannot connect to the database. But in a failover cluster setup, you will have one more database server. Okay, and let us say the mission name is M2. Okay, now in the cluster setup, let us say you cluster these two missions. In the cluster setup, you will give the cluster name, SQL Server cluster name. Let us say uh, VSQL1. Okay. In the application server, when you are connecting to the database, uh, if it is standalone, you will give the mission name M1. But if it is a cluster uh, server, then you will give the cluster name in the database connection string. Okay. You will give this name in the database connection to connect. Okay, so if this server goes down in the clustered environment, this server will process the database request. Okay, now the database will be available most of the time. That is what is called as high availability. In the cluster setup, these are nodes. Every computer is a node. Okay, and you can add as many nodes as possible. Okay, and in the typical active passive setup that I'm going to show you in the next few minutes, one mission will be up and running the services and the other in the other mission, the services will be stopped. The moment one server this server fails, this server, the services on this server will start processing the database request. This is the shareable disk in the clusters environment. This disk will be shared by both machines. But in the clustered setup, if one mission goes down, you will have another mission, another node process the database request. Okay. But what if the disk goes down, if this, the disk is not responding? Okay, so in that case, uh, you will have the option to go for mirroring or log shipping or whatever it is. Clustering doesn't support the media failures. It supports the hardware failures. In the database connection string, you will specify the, the cluster name instead of the mission name. 
So application database connection string doesn't need to be changed. If this mission fails, then this mission, this node will start processing the request. The database connection string in the application doesn't need to be modified. When the services fail over to the node 2, from node 1 to node 2, okay, there will be brief moment of interruption for the application to connect to the database. And all the services on the node 2 will be up and running, start process the request. So whatever the transactions that are happening during the failover, uh, those, those are gone. So again, that has to be initiated from the application server. But it will be available after a few seconds, depends on the size of the database. If the, if the database is huge, then it takes some time to, to recover, those, uh, tr uh, recover those transactions from the file, the log file. So it will take some time for the node to, to up and running and make it available for the application server. In the real scenario for the production, you will be doing the Windows Server clustering on the physical hardware. So this, this will be the physical hardware and this will be the SAN, SAN disk. Okay. But for the demo purposes, I am going to do the clustering on virtual environment. Whatever the environment, virtual or physical, the clustering setup is same. If you know how to cluster the virtual operating systems, then it's the same way you do it for the two physical computers. In fact, some companies prefer to have virtual cluster setup for their development environment because not many companies would like to spend thousands of dollars for their clustered development environment. In that case, it would be good to have virtual cluster setup on development or staging environment so that SQL Server DBS can play with it and see how the cluster behaves or performs before implementing in production. Actually, the Windows Server 2008 clustering changed quite a bit from Windows 2003 clustering. For example, support for iSCSI, IPv6 support and uh, DHCP support, service seats. There are many changes. But for this demo, let me show you the setup that I'm going to do it for the virtual servers. For this demo, this is my setup. This is my laptop. Okay, and I have 4 GB RAM on this machine. Okay, maybe 100 gigabytes of uh, hard disk. I will create three virtual machines. I will make this as a domain controller. This will be my VMware workstation virtual machine. I will install Windows Server 2008. Okay. And I will create one more virtual operating system. Windows Server 2008. And this will be my node 1. Okay, I will cluster these two machines. I will create domain control on this machine. I will join these two computers and I will cluster these two servers. Okay, and I will install SQL Server 2008 on this mission and this mission okay so in this video we will see how to create the virtual operating systems and how to make this server how to create domain controller and after that how to join the two computers install sql server 2008 failover clustering I have prepared the notes for this demo. Let me open that. This is the outline of this video. 
these are the steps I'm going to do. First, I'm going to build the Windows 2008 cluster. And after that, I'm going to install SQL Server 2008 failover cluster. And I will install the service packs on both the nodes. And I will set up active active cluster, cluster the analysis services, integration services, and uninstall the nodes. Okay, what are the softwares that are required for this clustering setup? First, we need the Starwind software for the iSCSI target. Uh, we are going to install the iSCSI target on domain controller on this mission. So we'll create the shared disk on this mission. Okay, and we make the shared disk available over IP using the Starwind software. So here on these missions, we have the iSCSI, Microsoft iSCSI initiators. So using which we can uh, make use of the storage that are available over IP that Starwind provides. Okay, and we need the Windows Server 2008 software for the server software. And we are going to use the virtual operating system that VMware provides. I'm going to install VMware Workstation. And uh, we need SQL Server Enterprise Edition. Since we are installing two nodes, even standard edition should be fine. But we can download and use the Enterprise Edition. And the host computer, the laptop in this case, should have better should have at least three gig, three gigabytes of ram because every uh, virtual operating system that i'm that i'm going to install i will make 512 mb ram available for that so three machines three into 512 which will be 1.5 uh, gb ram goes for the virtual machines and rest of the ram memory will be able, available for the host computer so you can just uh, assign 512 MB RAM for each uh, virtual machine. That should be fine. I have given the URLs for those trial editions. Okay. I have, in fact, I have downloaded those trial editions. Okay. I downloaded uh, Windows Server 2008 trial edition, VMware Workstation, and 2008 SQL Server 2008 software. Okay, first let's install VMware Workstation. Oh, okay, by the way, uh, I also listed down what are the different IP address that we need for this clustering. Okay, for the domain controller, we are going to assign 110. Okay. For this domain controller, we will assign 110. Okay, this will be 111. And this mission will be 112. Okay. Okay, it's installing that is fine and for domain controller 110 and it will connect to my router I have a router which connects to the cable modem so that I, I will give that router IP address in the default ga gateway so that I can connect to the internet from the virtual machine okay so I do I do the same thing for all the three virtual machines gateway IP should point to my router IP address if I don't give that, then I cannot connect internet and apply the security patches. I need to apply the security patches after installing Windows Server 2008. Okay. And since uh, I install a domain controller on this machine, on this machine, so I need to set the, I need to set the loopback address, which is 127.0.0.1. Okay, and for the nodes, so that the DNS server should point to the domain controller here. I have the DNS server here. So the DNS server for the node one should point to the domain controller. Similarly, for the node two, it points to the domain controller. I need 
one more network adapter for the heartbeat connection. For the node 1 and node 2, we need two network adapters, one for the public IPs, for the public to connect and another network adapter for the private IPs. Okay, so I have, let us say, we have 2.11 and 2.12 for those. And I have listed on the other IP address that we will be requiring for this uh, demo. We need IP address for the cluster and, my, and SQL Server and MSDTC. In case if you are going for active, active, then we need one more IP address. Okay, and for analysis services, we need one. In this video, I'm going to install the analysis service and a different resource group. That is why I needed IP address for the analysis service. Otherwise, if I install analysis service on the same resource group that SQL Server contains, then it doesn't need. Okay, but for this demo, I'm going to install analysis service on a different resource group, which is recommended by Microsoft. And I'm going to show you how to cluster SSIS. For that, I need one more IP address. So I took 117. Okay, these are the various IP address addresses required for our demo. Okay, so you can use these URLs to go and get the trial softwares that are required. Okay, so now I'm installing the virtual machine on my laptop. VMware workstation installation takes some time. I'm going to pause the video here and I will resume once the installation is complete.